Mamma Mia, here I go again. My, my, how can I resist ya? Is that it? Is yeah, that what we're <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Today we're going to be doing a Chipotle mukbang. And so we're just going to kind of, you know, sit here, eat, tell you what we're, what we're eating today. And then we're going to share a few stories, talk about some drama. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, you ripped yours up really slow and I didn't and I feel left out. I feel really bad that we have plastic straws because, like, we should be trying to save the earth, I but, know, like... But... Look how big she is. I got a Diet Coke. All I the ice a... is already melted. I didn't get ice in mine, but mine is so watered down, it's, like, really gross. Oh, it might have been out of seltzer. Thanks. I wanted Dr. Pepper. We got the queso. I'm not a big fan of Chipotle's queso. I, I think it I. tastes like... Like powdery almost. I don't know, but we got chips and guac and chips and yes. queso. If the queso's like, I don't know. I also ha I haven't had the queso in like a few months. Like probably like eight months. So maybe they changed changed it up a bit. I don't know. It doesn't look cute. Is it good? Do I have to try it? Yeah. Ew. It's not good. Yeah. I, I like don't want a lot. It Ugh. doesn't smell good. No, it doesn't do me much, honestly. It's like thick, like there's like a lot of flour in there. Mm -hmm. It like barely tastes like cheese. So let's get that guac in there to save it. Yeah. Yes. I think I can do without the without this. I'll mm -hmm. probably eat it when I'm bored. So Ooh. what did you get? So I got, I, this is what I traditionally get. I got, um, a burrito with white rice, black beans, chicken, and then I get the corn salsa and the mild salsa. I get both cheese and sour cream. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm attempting as much of the queso as I can. Mm-hmm. We have to do something with it. Mm-hmm. Can't just sit here. Mm. They gave us a total of like 25, like tw 25 chips, y'all. Mm -hmm. like, they really didn't give us a lot. But you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Because yeah, this burrito is so I'm big. I'm hungry. Me too. Oh. Mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Can you your first bite into the burrito? Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. Mm. <laughs> that was all guac. Mm. Mm. Mine was a good mix. Mine was literally just guac and rice. Watch, all so of mine's gonna be at the bottom. Mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I've like literally been waiting for this all day. I just spit on you. I'm so sorry. She's constantly spitting on me. I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anything that's been eating at you lately? Mm. Eaten. Oh. Eaten. <laughs> Ew. Nothing really. Bite. Um. I like cradle my burrito. <laughs> With a file. And she's here. <laughs> I thought you spit on my carpet again. My carpet! I didn't. <laughs> I just tried to speak and I failed. I was about to say like a child. You cradle it like a child. Yeah. Oh my god, you know what I just realized? What? I left my prescription at Rite Aid. Wait, did you really? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's delve into that one. Uh -huh. It's just like, I haven't been thinking about that word a lot too lately. Delve. Like. Del I thought you were going to say friends. Friends. <laughs> oh. 
friends. Mm -hmm. I used to be so horrible at friendships. I mean, I'm probably still not super great at them, but like, I used to be just like the clingiest person ever. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I have ruined so many friendships because of like mental health and like that sort of stuff and just like Me too. I believe I'm one of those people I really do I believe that everyone comes into your life at different periods like when you need them or to teach you a lesson like I'm one of those people I believe that mm -hmm. and like I really do believe 100% that all friendships are not meant to work out and I think that's part of the lesson like I think everyone who comes into your life is supposed to teach you something, whether or not that's small or that's large. I don't know. So, like, I'm, of course, like, during the time, I was really upset that a lot of those friendships didn't work out. But in the long run, like, maybe their lives are better because of it. Like, maybe my, like, my life is better because of it. Like, I don't know. That's a really interesting thought. I like that. I feel like I've never, like, I've had that experience. Like, when I was growing up, my dad taught me that, like, not everyone you talk to or, like, are acquainted to or acquainted with are your friends. So he was always, like, friends are people who are really, really close to you and that you would trust with your life. So, like, I grew up with, like, three friends. <laughs> that was weak. That's probably gonna happen a lot. But that's kind of, like, what I grew up with. So, like, when I make, like, an actual friend, I'm, like... You know this because you're like one of the two people I hang out with. Like I <laughs> cling to that person, not in like a weird way where I'm like, you're the only person I ever talk to. But it's no, like mine was weird. When I said I clung, I clung. It was, it was so bad. Like, and like I think everyone experiences a little bit of FOMO. But like three, four, like two, three years ago, FOMO was my middle name. Like if you went to dinner without me, I was like, what? <laughs> like panic like, attack by literally yourself. panic attack but like mm -hmm. obviously growing up like i made so many mistakes like and i just worried about dumb stuff i think that's what it really all was i was just so worried about dumb stuff like people weren't gonna love me people weren't gonna be my friend people weren't gonna this people weren't gonna that and like mm -hmm. uh, eventually i got over it you know what i, I mean like so much cheese on myself oh my god I'm afraid if I put this burrito down, like, I'm not going to be able to pick it back up. <laughs> it's, like, it's going to all fall out. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's why our friendship works out a lot yeah. like it does is because, like, we've learned so much about that in the past. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have a friendship where, like, we build each other up instead of, like, tearing True. each other down. Yes, accurate. Sometimes a little too much, but, like... Yeah, probably fine. way too much. Way too much. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think what helps me on my end a lot is, like, like I said, I don't really worry about the little things anymore. So, like, mm -hmm. whenever... You, like, you're younger than I am. So, like, whenever you go through stuff like that, I'm like, yo, like, just take a seat. Like, breathe. Think about it. Don't do this mm -hmm. right away. Like, That's I'm able to lend that because I've been there. I've mm -hmm. been through those kind of things before, which I think yeah. has been really helpful. And then, like... Also through learning, I've come, like, I come to you now and I'm like, oh my god, like, I'm about to pop off, like, she's gonna get it, he's gonna get it. Like, okay, I'm the one that, like, you come to when you're like, I'm about to, like, roast on Facebook, and I'm like, okay, call me. On Facebook! <laughs> That's so true, though. I'm like, somebody will say some, people love saying dumb crap on Facebook. They love it. And I'm like, oh, let me breathe. <laughs> no, but, like. And you text me about that stuff, and I'm like, all right, let's take a seat. Everything is going to be okay. Ooh. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'm a lot more chill with that. I don't like conflict. I don't like calling people out. Conflicts. See, FOMO used to be my middle name, but now conflict's my middle name. Like, I just feel like if somebody's... Uh, maybe that's also says to, like, my age and, like, the direction that I've grown. Like, I just feel like when people do you wrong or people, like intentionally go out of their way to like be malicious like that boils my blood like mm -hmm. i just want to tell you like hey you over there stop like just stop like you're doing that for mm -hmm. no reason like you're hurting people for no reason just stop like there's no reason to do that see Ooh. i'm like like i'm the total opposite where like if someone like it takes a lot to get me mad which i feel like isn't a good <laughs> isn't a good sign 
Because that means I let people walk all over me. You well, know I have to tell you that sometimes. I'm like, he Sam, does. they're taking advantage of you. Mm-hmm. Stop. Like We've had those. Yeah. I'm like, do I need to message them? Like, do well, I need to let them know? Like, <laughs> am I adding them on Facebook? I'm like, leave my life alone. <laughs> But like, Facebook, you know, again, like, oh, it is Facebook. It really is. Hello, Facebook but mommy. Like, like the Facebook page, link in the description. Yes. No, but um, I feel comfortable sharing this now. But, like, we had, I had a situation my beginning of my sophomore year with my roommates because they were literally treating me like crap. And I ended up having to, like, leave my apartment for, like, a week solid. And I stayed with, like, friends and everything. And, like, I don't know what I would have done without you. And um, we have another friend. Goosh like, boo, you'll see her on the yes, channel. You will. Hey boo. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> she we're like the the three of us are a thing. We're the, the trio. The trio. But like I don't know what I would have done without you guys. Like I would have let them continue to treat me like mm, You like, would have. And you would have probably mm-hmm. lived there all year. Like. I would have. And I ended up like moving out for my second semester and I took a semester off and it was like really good for me and I got like a, an amazing job that I have now. But like But that's what friends are for exactly. though. Like they're supposed to be there and like help you mm. get through that kind of stuff. Like yeah. they're supposed to be there for like the times that you don't like when all of your flaws, all of your this that, and the other, whenever you feel like you don't have the ability to do something, you're supposed to have a friend there that mm-hmm. can help you out with that. Like a friend that's the friends. point of friendship. Like exactly, it's to yeah. fill in the gaps. Like, yeah, people say that about like relationships and all that stuff too. But like to be very fair, like two people, that's not gonna fill in all your gaps. So boyfriend, girlfriend, mm-hmm. boy, 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 girl, girl, whatever. Like, it's not gonna fill in all the gaps. Like, two people don't complete all flaws. That's why you have True. relatives. That's why you have friends. Like, that's why you have cousins that like, mm-hmm. you see twice a year. Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> Shade. But um, it's just like it's one of those things that's really frustrating to me when friends, when you have those friends that'll seriously like hype you up no matter what, like. When they tell you that everything you produce is good, all the music, like, we write music, so, like, in our round, like, all the music that you've ever written is great. Like, when they tell you, like, oh, like, you hit notes that you didn't hit, like, that's that's just one realm of my life. I'm so sorry, like, that it's just all music references, but, like... Mm -hmm. When you have friends who do nothing but hype you up, those are fake friends. Like, they're mm-hmm. they're not telling you what's real. They're not, like... And there's a difference between real and rude. And, like, depending on your friendship, real can be rude. I feel like if you're close enough to a friend and, like, you pull them aside and you're like, Hey, just letting you know, like, you asked for my opinion. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Mm-hmm. That's a real friendship. Like, I'm not going to sit here and boast you up and tell you, like, oh, like everything that you do is good when it's not like that wouldn't be me being genuine that's me being fake and Mm -hmm. i can't stand when it gets twisted around the other way and suddenly the friend that's always giving you the criticism is like the fake friend or the rude friend or the friend that doesn't have your back like no Mm -hmm. like if you need confidence through something of course i'm going to be there and i'm going to be like hey you can do this even though like just say like i don't think that we're like you're in the best situation i'm just gonna be like hey like i know you can do it i know you can get through it like i'm not gonna sit here and like tell you otherwise Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i i can't stand that stuff i can rant about that all day we know (laughs) see i don't know i feel like that's what our friendship is for like we're very different people we're very similar people very similar we, people. Yes, but we're also extremely different. We're different in all the right ways, I think. Yeah, like, there are things like that... Like, we interest- balance each other out. Exactly. Because, like, I am naturally a very quiet and shy person. I don't like... I don't like going up to people. I don't like meeting people. I don't like going out. I don't like doing anything. And you're very... You're very good at being social. I am not. Yeah, I'm horribly good at being social. Like... Not to be like, oh, it's outgoing, but like... people that, like, you've never met that we, like, I have been with you, you say hi to someone, and I'm like, oh, they're friends. (laughs) Sam's like, oh, like, you talk to them like you've known them forever, and I'm like... How many times have I said that to you over the course of our friendship? (laughs) Too often, like... How? There are people... Okay, there's this guy that I straight up had in, like, six of my classes and starting here. I don't know his first name. Well, the thing is, like, with being outgoing... It's also counteractive, too, because with being super outgoing, as I think I am, I also think I'm the funniest person in the room, which means that every chance that there is, like, I will say something that I think is funny, even Mm -hmm. if nobody else thinks it's funny, and then I'll sit there and laugh because I think I'm the funniest person in the room. Mm -hmm. I also speak when I'm not supposed to. 
You know, like yeah, there's so many other things that come. Cause Sam's like, oh my. there's so many politics when it comes to acapella too. It's yeah, just, just like, music in general is very difficult. Like the music community is just like so intertwined here on our campus, at mm -hmm. least that it's like everyone knows everyone. You can't get away with anything because everyone finds out about it. Like, mm -hmm. and even when you don't think people know, people. We know. We know. <laughs> we know. Yeah. The acapella okay. community, for as much as I love it, there's a lot of drama. There's just a lot happening. I mean... We have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their, like, little group. I think. Not intentionally. And it's not like we have groups that, like, hate each other. That's... Like, Pitch Perfect is not That's, real. Yeah, but, well, at least on our campus, it's not. I know other campuses where the mm -hmm. acapella groups don't don't get along very well, and it's because yeah. they've had, like, a really bad history of, like, scheduling things on the same day, and, like, big events, and this one not wanting to, have, like, associate with this one. Like, I know yeah. those kind of stories, but, like, we're, I, we're our campus really is really very easy. nice. It's, like, it's not the groups that have the issue. It's the people within the groups mm -hmm. that have the issue. Like, I don't know. We just have, like, a hard time of... N differentiating the personal issues and the, the group business mm -hmm. issues like people like to say like oh you're causing issues with the group like no I'm not causing issues with the group like I have an issue with so and so and because we're all BFFs and we mm -hmm. all know about it you want to say it's a group issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's like, no, that's my personal business. And because we are all friends, you know my personal business. Mm -hmm. Now, just because we're all friends doesn't mean that my personal business is the group business. Like, yes. there's so many blurred lines. Those movies are, like, infuriating. And I know it's, like... I love the first one, well, but I think it's because it was so new. The second one, everyone hated. I didn't think it was that bad. I haven't seen the third one yet. The third one is, it's just like they're trying to make it like on a more and more like amazing global scale. And I'm like, that's not real though. To the point where like, if I could compete in like a net, like an internationally recognized, like televised, actually with like a lot of different countries, like acapella event like bitch you better believe i would be starting a group right now yeah but, like that's not real that's the thing is because of pitch perfect like acapella like collegiate acapella like got a name mm -hmm. and pentatonics around the same time was like getting really big and so like that's the thing is like even though pitch perfect has been like doing its thing and like breaking records and all of those things like even though all of that is true, the pentatonics are the are still the only group like in their category. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like pentatonics have such a huge following and it's like collegiate groups obviously because like we we switch out people all the time mm -hmm. because like what we do is very different than what pentatonics does. Like and even like they're just, we're just not in the same realm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, even though there's lots and lots and lots of acapella music that's, like, produced a year, no, every it's really year. Recognized. No, it's recognized. It never really gets recognized, except for, like, mm -hmm. the varsity, what is it, the varsity vocal, like, their awards and that sort of stuff. Well, they like, do Boca, which is best of collegiate acapella. Yeah. Which, like, we listen to. We listen like, to, but, like, the average person's not going to listen to that. Exactly. And it's because, like, the music for Pitch Perfect isn't the same you know what i mean it's, like people well, listen arranged, to pitch perfect music like yes but that's first of all arranged by a professional he's like the father of contemporary acapella so he really knows what he's doing it's all done in his studio it's recorded it's dramatized clearly there are parts yeah. that literally don't exist for female groups mm -hmm. literally don't exist but it's like that's the thing that is it is such an inaccurate reflection of what collegiate acapella is of what even professional acapella really is. And then when people like go listen to actual collegiate acapella, like it's nothing like the movies. They're like, oh, I don't like this. And I'm like, that's because what you've been exposed to is literally nothing like what it actually is. And people get disappointed and then they don't want to listen to our music. And it's so discouraging. Yeah, it is kind of discouraging. We work really hard. We work so hard. And we still and sound really we good. We sound amazing, but it's we just We sound like, bomb as hell. Acapella is still one of my greatest, like, greatest accomplishments. So, like, it's it just, like, it's just really hard for me to, like, go through life and, like, 
whenever I talk about like me being an acapella, people always go, oh, like pitch perfect. And I'm like, ha ha, like, yeah, like, but like not really. It, and it's hard to explain because it's a, clearly a, a decently long conversation. Yes. And I, Ugh. I'm filling up. Thanks. <laughs> no, I go to like a bunch of different places and people always ask me about myself because it's like, why not? And I always say like, oh, I, I study English, I do music, and they're like, oh, what kind of music? And I always say, oh, I do acapella. And the first thing they say is, oh, like Pitch Perfect? And I'm like, first thing. not at all. <laughs> Some of the music written and performed at like our collegiate competitions are tenfold better than like the music that are the music that's in those movies like it's so crazy mm -hmm. like that music in those movies is created for those movies and like what we do is created for our community like yeah. it's it's so different so completely different it really is but just, that's a whole tangent about acapella that i feel like was necessary i'm done with my burrito i didn't eat anything today prepping for this video so i'm very full i can talk about like, acapella for years same but um oh no i feel like definitely like my relationships outside of acapella <laughs> i have no idea like i don't think i have relationships outside of acapella i have like maybe two friends it takes up like you to you do so much of it yeah it's, it's really hard. like it's captivating for your whole life and we have such a big community that we're like all just together. When you go to those social events, like it's always the same people. And like, I love- <laughs> You sounded so bitter saying that. So, I mean, that's fair. I love everyone, I really do. It's just like, sometimes it's really hard seeing the same people always. Like I'll sacrifice like my- You took the biggest chip. <laughs> you handed them to me, I was gonna take them all. <laughs> it's hard like going, knowing that you're gonna go to a party to see the same people you saw last weekend. Mm -hmm. All of them. And we're gonna do the same thing. Yeah. I work all week and then I don't wanna do anything on the weekends. Very cute. Mm -hmm. Good job. Um, so like I- <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yes. If like when I go out to like parties and like to hang out with people, I wanna look cute. Like I wanna like, I dress up, I wear something nice. I don't want to do that for the same we should have had 20 that sitting people, in the camera the whole time. right? Um, like, I don't want to dress up and like try to look cute for the same like 20, 30 people that I saw last weekend. Like, oh, I, I really, do. <laughs> I don't. Like, who am I trying to impress? I do. I love literally, you, I just want people like, to think I'm fancy. Uh, where I shop, that don't matter. It's what I'm wearing that matters. And if I'm looking cute, then anyway, <laughs> then all them people can square up because I'm <laughs> I'm taking everybody. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, but um, we were talking about before, we're just finishing up here. We're gonna actually move on to dessert while we talk about relationships. Yes. We're gonna eat something sweet while we talk about something bitter. That was a wonderful transition. <laughs> Wait, mamma mia. I don't know. I'm just getting out of a seven, like a six and a half, you know, like seven year relationship. And it's not been like the smoothest, like definitely at the beginning, it wasn't a smooth transition at all. But like, I left the country. <laughs> not like because of it. How to, yeah, how, how to escape, <laughs> that how to escape a breakup. Leave the country. Hello, my name's Little Debbie. And today we're gonna be eating an oatmeal cream pie. This little Debbie is gonna be eating our Swiss rolls. I'm already through one package. So like what I was saying before is just like, oh, I'm so full. Me too, but I'm gonna eat all of these. It's just like me being so busy with like everything in my entire life, like, like acapella and my class, like my schoolwork and like working at the same time by balancing family and a relationship and everything like over the years like my ability to like maintain like a, a consistent relationship with really anyone was like super super like difficult but like after like six and a half years like my relationship ended and like it was it was really rough at first and then once i realized that like she like she's she's been my best friend since like eighth grade so it's like 
<laughs> it's been like nine a nine year friendship. I like that's not gonna go anywhere. Like I'm not gonna throw like throw that away. That doesn't make sense. And once I like left the country and like I for school <laughs> for school once, like I barely got the opportunity. But like once I like left the country and like was really able to sit down and think about like my life and like what's going on and like what direction I want to go in. And I spoke to like traditional healers and that sort of stuff. Like once I like really sat down and figured it out, like I knew that everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so like I've been okay. And then I, when I got back, I got <laughs> unceremoniously dumped like out of the blue, which was like weird. It wasn't a super long relationship, but it's someone that I've known and been really close to for a very long time. Um, we met at a very difficult point in my life and, um, he got me through like a lot and it kind of just came out of nowhere. I had just competed in an open competition in New York city. I called him after the show and he broke up with me and then hung up and I called you literally uh, sobbing. I couldn't breathe. Bye. <laughs> no, he was like, okay, bye. We'll talk later. And then he hung up and I was like what and i like collapse i was so dramatic i collapsed on the streets of new york oh my god i really did i fucked up my entire leg i ruined my shoes i got broke up with broken up with the day we came back from a competition too yeah and we didn't do well mm -mm. i lost that night wow it really Sorry, is William. Mm, interesting but um yeah i mm. was it was like very out of nowhere for once me you start least. losing they start they running start <laughs> they start <laughs> running <laughs> No, but I mean, <laughs> that's so bad. But I called you and I was sobbing, and you were like, When you get back, come, come down, upstairs. Just come. I didn't really get the chance to like take time and recover from it because I work full time. So I was back at work on Monday and I got home on Sunday. It literally happened Saturday night. I was at work, and I was like, Literally, I felt like I was gonna die. And you honestly, for me, it was different. My relationship was so public for yeah. so many years. I, I got asked about her literally every day. Like, I'd leave my apartment. Like, we were engaged. So, like, I would leave my apartment and, like, go to class. And people would be like, oh, your ring. Like, how's your fiance? Like, because we both had rings because we were progressive. All of my friends have obviously here had met her, like all of my people at home, everyone I graduated with. We made a post together because it was like, it was one of those things where like, we have to let people know because one, we had been engaged, two, we had been together for so long that we couldn't just like change our relationship status on Facebook and call it a day. You know what I mean? So like we made a post and um, it was like, it was very mutual and then like, Afterwards, it was really upsetting, like, for the weeks to come, and it was just, like, it was one of those things where it was, like, I need to leave the country, so I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. I'm, like, glad you had that experience, though, because I, like, from what you've told me, it was a very, like, cathartic experience, and it was good, and I think you needed that after everything that happened that semester. I needed Jesus. 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 I'm just, like, coming back and, like, readjusting to being home, I've realized that, like, I'm not at a point in my life where I can have a relationship. I'm not at a point in my life where, like, I need one. I don't need one. Mm -hmm. And not to say that, like, if I wasn't still in my relationship, that it would be, it wouldn't be great. It wouldn't be amazing. It wouldn't be that everything that I wanted because it, at the time it was everything that I wanted. I don't think it's healthy for me to spread myself that thin. And I think I was doing that for a really long time and nobody... Nobody was able to do anything about it because like it was already said it was already done with you know what I mean? I'm like at the point where like I don't really care anymore Like I not, just, not like, like I don't care about anyone or anything like just to make that clear We're almost three years apart and like honestly like when I was her age like my relationship like I was almost at my I was almost I was almost at three years in my relationship and so like at that point I had felt like at 19, when you're in a relationship for that long, of course you're going to think that, like, where you're at is going to be where you are going, like, where you are for the rest of your life. Like, obviously, like, I proposed, I, I was pretty sure that, like, <laughs> where I was, where I was going is, like, where I wanted to go and where, like, I, ha not that I, oh, 
this has become very hard to, to say and formulate. <laughs> it's like, I was ready to, to have the rest of my life written for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then when you don't get to make that decision anymore, it like, it crumbles your world. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's very difficult, but like, my advice to you is like somebody, like I've been in your footsteps, I guess, like, yeah. or when I was your age, I was in a long-term relationship, is like, I don't want you to think that you need that in order to have fulfillment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which like fundamentally I know that I'm like, and I think it's getting really, emotional. You are, I'm like, <laughs> don't oh, fucking dare like, cry. If you cry oh, all the time. No, I no. can't, I can't. I'm like I cry too much for this. Oh, I'm like literally about to cry. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> like, what okay, is this? No, let me, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to eat my own milk cream pies, y'all. Like, I like the way I make decisions, I try to make them based off of logic, but then I have this like, well, this is what I want, this is what I feel, and it's very conflicting and it makes it hard for me to make I that's why I can't make decisions. Um, but it's like, logically, I know, like, it was the best for us to break up. He's kind of just not the person that I need in my life right now. Maybe not ever. We don't know yet. I haven't spoken to him in a while. Um, and I'm okay with that. But like, emotionally, I'm like, I put so much into this. I spent all of this time in my life on you and like we weren't in a relationship for as long as you but i met him a really long time no, ago yeah me, it's still no matter how long like your relationship is like when you sit down and you invest the time and the energy towards like building a strong connection like yes. it doesn't matter how long your relationship is it's still worth something you know mm -hmm. what i mean like and it's like we planned things for like the future we literally had our plans i i feel like i missed out on things i didn't go to some parties because um i was like oh i'd rather stay home and talk to him and it's like i feel like i wasted all of this time and this energy and this emotion and like to plan and like build a connection for someone to just be like oh never mind like that's what it felt like to me and like that is crushing and like i i didn't know i didn't think i could recover from that because like i'm a very emotional person you know this i cry all the time yeah for someone like at your age, I just don't want you to think that like you need a relationship to complete yourself or oh, like yeah. have purpose. Cause I feel like there's so many people at your age and at my age, like in our age range that just like feel like if they're not in a relationship, then they don't have everything that they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, like I was saying earlier, it's not like two people don't fill in all the gaps. Exactly. Two people don't fill in all the gaps. Like Yeah, and it's just like it's hard because no one <laughs> shit. And like I feel like I feel so strongly sometimes and nobody else our age really does. And mm -hmm. that's kind of difficult cuz like <laughs> or it's like they do but like not in the same things that you care about yeah. like or like in the same way. No, yeah. And that's just a really harsh reality to kind of come to. And it's like, that's that's a lot of what I was feeling like back when I was your age and I was like having all of those friends issues like mm -hmm. I was just feeling like I cared so much and nobody else cared about anything and it's like I feel like I care so much it's more really than everyone else hard. It's, it's really very... hard with people our age yeah that's why I feel like me and Kush have just worked out so much is because yeah. well, we all do we the all same feel thing. that way yeah we all feel that way where we're like oh like what's everyone doing like blah, blah. like it's almost like we take turns asking, we do like, oh my god wait that's so accurate fast conclusion fast conclusion so friendship is really important love the people you are friends with acapella drama but we love her relationships you don't need them but they're nice to have True. treat people with respect not like dirt. Accurate. This is the conclusion of our mukbang. Yes. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.